Hey Wheaton North, Mr. Yergo here. We're going to talk about uh, photoelectron spectroscopy. We shorten that to PES and that's related to ionization energy. So we should talk about ionization energy as well. This is a great picture of photoelectric spectroscopy uh, shining a light on a, on a sample and then measuring the electrons that come off of that sample. We need to start with Coulomb's law. Coulomb studied the interaction between charged particles and these two things we kind of know intuitively now. Opposites attract and likes repel. So protons repel other protons and electrons repel other electrons. Um, he was able to quantify this mathematically where he said that the, the force of one particle to another is equal to a constant and then the amount of charge that we have divided by the radius squared. So the radius being the distance between the two particles. And we can th kind of think of the force between these two particles, the force of attraction, in terms of the amount of energy required to remove them. And that's kind of how we're going to think about them. How much energy does it take to remove a particle uh, instead of the force that's, that's in between them? This gets us to what's called ionization energy. And if you look at the term, it kind of makes sense. It would be the amount of energy required to ionize an atom. So in order to ionize an atom, we have to remove an electron completely. So we're not jumping from, from a ground state to excited state. We're completely removing the electron from the atom altogether. And the energy required to do that um, is the ionization energy. There's also what's called a second ionization energy. The second ionization energy is just the energy to remove a second electron. Usually we're talking about the first ionization energy. So in this picture, the first ionization energy would be the energy required to remove this first electron, and then the second ionization energy would then remove the next electron. When that first electron is removed, we now have fewer negative electrons on the outside of our, of our atom, but with the same number of protons, and that kind of like pulls the atom in a little bit tighter because we're attracting less electrons, and so they're kind of more strongly attracted to the, to the nucleus. And so the second ionization energy is always larger than the first. Hydrogen, here's a picture with the cloud model. Hydrogen has one proton and one electron, and that proton and electron are attracted to each other. So the ionization energy for hydrogen would be the amount of energy required to remove that electron, and you would have just a proton left. We can compare that to helium. Helium is a little bit smaller because it has more protons and, and two electrons, but they're in the same energy level. And so if you increase the number of charge on the inside and you increase the number of char the charge on the outside, that's going to increase the force between them. Uh, and if we increase the force between them, the radius is getting smaller. And so the energy required to remove those electrons has to get larger. Let's look at what's called shielding. It helps to look at, at lithium as an example for this. Uh, so a lithium is, is just like helium, except it has that one uh, electron in the 2s orbital. We know that electrons repel each other. So we have inner electrons in the 1s, and now we have an electron on the, in the 2s, and those are going to repel each other. And so the, the attraction force from the, from the electron on the outside to the nucleus is going to be kind of somewhat reduced, like we have a lower net force because we also have this, this re repulsion force from the inner electrons pushing out on the outside electrons. And because we have a larger radius as well, because the 2s is larger than the, than the 1s, we have a lower ionization energy, meaning it requires less energy to remove that one electron. This is the graph of the main group elements and their ionization energies, their first ionization energies. So you'll notice hydrogen starts here, and then the next one is helium. We're increasing in atomic number. So you can actually look through this, and, and notice the little dip from ni nitrogen to oxygen. We should be able to identify, now that, we know, now that we're comfortable with orbital diagrams and electron configuration, why oxygen actually has a lower ionization energy, meaning it's easier to remove an electron, than nitrogen. This brings us to what's called the photoelectric effect. It's, kind of, it's very similar to ionization energy. Essentially the same thing is happening. Again, we're not talking about moving an electron from a ground state to an excited state because that electron then is still with the atom and it's not an ion yet. To make an ion, we have to completely remove it. And we can do that with light. So if we shine a light of a certain wavelength on a piece of metal, for example, if, if the energy from the light is, is high enough at the right energy, it will actually eject an electron from that material. And this is called the photoelectric effect. It was discovered by Einstein. Notice on this, uh, on this red light, it's not enough energy to eject, so we don't get any electrons. We only get electrons when we shine specific wavelengths because those specific wavelengths have specific energies that are enough to eject uh, electrons from those particular atoms. And these electrons that are ejected are called uh, photoelectrons.
once we eject those electrons, we can actually measure how many electrons were ejected and what energy was required to eject them. And this brings us to what's called a photoelectric spectrum. So this is the spectrum for hydrogen. You'll notice that there's just a single peak, and I've labeled this as one. This is kind of a relative scale sometimes, the number of photoelectrons. Hydrogen only has one electron, and so we eject it at a certain energy. Energy is on the x-axis here. We can also look at helium. Heliums, it looks very similar, but, it's, but the peak is twice as big because we are now ejecting two electrons instead of just one. And so our peak is doubled in size. There's no units on, our, on my x-axis here in this picture, but the energy required to eject those two electrons, for one, would be the same for both of them because they're both in the, in the 1s orbital. And it would also be higher than hydrogen's ionization energy because it requires more energy to eject electrons from helium, again, because they're kind of held a little bit tighter because we have extra protons in the center. Let's take a look at beryllium. Beryllium ha has a con configuration of 1s2 and 2s2, and so we, we end up with two peaks of equal size because we eject the 2s electrons first and then the 1s electrons. If you look at carbon, if you think about carbon's electron configuration, it'd be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So we end up with three peaks at different energies, but they're equal size because we're ejecting two electrons from every in every example. Take a look at this photoelectron spectrum, and you should be able to figure out what is the electron configuration, what, and then therefore what element is it. Remember that, um, pay attention to the scale here. We're actually increasing in energy going this way, and the reason we do that is because the the electrons that require the most energy are the most inner electrons, which would be the 1s2 electrons, right? So then from there, based on the relative size, we should be able to figure out how many electrons were ejected and then therefore give us the electron configuration and therefore the element, all right? Bring your answer to that in, uh, to class, and we'll discuss and go through a few more examples. This is Mr. Yergler, signing out.